Live with brought to you by Species Nutrition. I'm Dave Palumbo and I'm here today with a good friend. Uh, we haven't heard from him in a while. I figured I'd get him back here. He's been going through some crazy stuff. Dominic Cardone, how's it going? Everything's going good now, Dave. How's everything with you? <laughs> Very good. You know, I saw on your Facebook you had posted and I, I forgot you uh, had, were having some health issues and you know, maybe a lot of people don't know about it. And you know, I wanted to talk about it because it, it is a real a concern among bodybuilders, especially because we love to eat our fish and our sushi. Uh, you've been dealing with mercury toxicity, huh? Yeah, and I'm actually glad to be on because one thing that I've been wanting to do now that you know I'm able to think better and uh, process things better is to raise more awareness on this because I did post a little bit about it a few months ago on my Instagram, mm -hmm. and I had so many people contacting me thinking they had it, and a few people who did contact me, me <laughs> who went for the testing, they actually did have it and wow. you know i have one one person in canada the doctors won't help them there so i want to i do want to raise more awareness on this because it has impacted my life in a way that i mean i never would have expected but there's been so many complications and issues that arose from this and nobody could find issue uh the answer up until this may right um, what were your symptoms first of all so it goes back all the way to, uh, you know, I got back into training August 2019. I was in Venice, October 2019. And I remember my bowel movements um, weren't normal and I was getting stomach pain. So I didn't think anything of it. Mm -hmm. uh, a few months went by. I'm into 2020. It's not getting any better. I'm like, all right, maybe it'll just, it'll go away. I started getting extremely bloated, mood issues. Mm -hmm. um, and then this, the real bad stomach issues came. No matter what I ate. I would get severe distension. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I wouldn't go to the bathroom for days at a time, or I would go too much. Um, severe acid reflux. Moved to Vegas last year, last March. And then around May, June, I you know got back in the gym after quarantine. And I noticed I wasn't getting any pumps. The stomach issues were at their worst. I was mm -hmm. getting real bad. Like uh, my, I always had good skin in a way. Yeah. But it, over the past year, I was looking more aged. I was breaking out all over the place. And mm -hmm. that's when it really started. And I noticed my moods and my memory was going. And then it just got worse. And I'm going to stop you here for a second. Because, you know, Don, a lot of people know because you made this public. You know, your mom passed away from cancer. I have to believe, knowing that I came from a similar background with my mom, the, the first thing that's going through your head is, I have cancer, right? I didn't even ask you, but I know that this is what's going through your head, right? If 100, and that's, I don't have really any fears. Yeah. But, you know, after seeing what she went through and whatnot, that is like something I don't wish upon my worst enemy. Right. And I see all this going on and, and nobody's giving me freaking answers right. between uh, stomach specialists last year, regular MDs. And now I'm starting to think, you know, like, what the, could this be cancer? Especially, you know, I told my girlfriend this that, recently. That's what I would be thinking. Exactly. Yeah. You, you know, and it's just the, the problems with the red blood cells and sure. this and that. I'm like, this is awfully way too familiar. Yeah. So what? So what? How do you, how do you find someone who actually can help you out at this point? So, in my case, back in March, uh, excuse me, February, I hooked up with Flex Lewis's gut specialist, Roland Pankowitz, mm -hmm. um, because I thought it was just stomach issues. Mm -hmm. um, I cut out anything out of my diet other than what he told me. Uh, strict supplement plan. Stomach problems within four weeks went away. Mind you, I didn't realize at the time I wasn't eating fish. So every wow. week it was getting better. I was eating fish every weekday for the longest time. How, yeah, how, yeah, how many times a day would you eat? And what kind of fish were you eating? So two to four times a week, I was doing sushi. You know, the mackerel, uh, right. uh, albacore tuna, yeah. yellowtail, and 20 to 30 pieces at a time. And then every day I was doing tuna steaks. And then I'll do the flavor tuna. When you were too. poor, you couldn't afford to do that. Now you're making money and you're actually killing yourself by eating fish, right? Ex Who would have thought? Exactly. <laughs> It was the easiest thing to eat, and it tastes good. So I'm like, great, yeah. this will get me yeah. big, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so he, he does the blood. We did a Genova testing in March. Yeah. And, um, you know, everything pretty much came back good. Other than that, he goes, all right. Didn't, we didn't make much of a big deal about it. Right, did like right. a natural detox. I, I wanted to just stop you for a second. I'm, I'm going to come back to you. Because I, when I, I, first of all, I ate a ton of sushi when I was young. I don't even know what my mercury was. But <laughs> I, I remember when I worked for MD, Blackman, Steve Blackman, who owns MD, he, he was... He came back, he had high mercury, and he was carrying on about it, and he's like, it's a tuna, and I'm not eating tuna anymore, I gotta, you gotta eat salmon. So he got this in my head, that you, you can't eat too much tuna, so I've been, I'm a, I, I love salmon, so I eat salmon every day. So there's no really mercury in salmon. And then I had a client who called me and said, you know, I got mercury, uh, same thing as you, mercury to this and that, and I'm like, really? I said, what fish is you? Because I eat salmon. I said, it's impossible, salmon doesn't have mercury. I said, you got to be eating something else. No, no, you, you should check your heavy metal. So 
you know, I got one of these home tests. You know, they, they have these like, uh, someone had sent me, a sponsor of mine had sent me these home tests. You kind of stick your finger and you put your the, 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 the blood blots on the paper, you send it out, and they send you back. They test for all the heavy metals. It comes back, my mercury's fine, I, I'm high in lead. So now I'm thinking, I'm going see, I'm going to fucking lose my brain because lead is worse than fucking mercury. Oh. And so I, I, I'm freaking out over this whole thing. And so I, I actually call my doctor up and I said, you got to send me for a, 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 a heavy metal test because I'm now, now I'm all paranoid. They <laughs> sent me for the heavy metal test and where they take actual blood out of your arm and everything and everything came back normal. So I, and I didn't have any negative symptoms, but I started creating symptoms in my head because, you know, I'm thinking there's something wrong. And I know we know our good friend Jason Ha huh, also had the terrible mercury poisoning. So yes. you find out you got mercury poisoning, but you're not eating fish at this point. So what happens after that? So we did like this natural detox using zeolites, okay. um, chlorella, whatnot for a month. Right. Mind you, I was completely off of everything for okay. a couple of months, not even test. Right. Uh, I mean, I shrunk like I've never seen myself shrink before. And I've always came completely off cycle, yeah. Dave. Yeah. Um, and, but I knew, I felt great though. Right. I wasn't eating fish, I wasn't on cycle. So I, I figured that has something to do with the body's detox pathways. So uh, beginning of May, um, I get back on cycle. Nothing mm. crazy, 750 test, Primo, right. um, GH. I don't want to go crazy. Two weeks in, I'm like, I'm starting to feel like sick again. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? Right. Um, anyways, I knew the mercury levels were high. Um, I started working with, again, Flex's massage therapist. She's, you know, massage. She goes, something feels wrong here. She goes, are you eating? I'm like, I'm eating the most I've eaten since years ago, since yeah. I was 280. But yet, meanwhile, I was skinny. What were you and, eating now? What, what kind of protein sources were you eating? Uh, chicken, uh, mainly turkey breast. Okay. Uh, chicken breast here or there. Bison, New York strip steak. Um, okay, so no fish. Whole, no fish. Zero, not even salmon. And, uh, you know, she says, something feels really off here. So I'm like, so she asked me a bunch of questions. I'm like, this has to be it. Because normally, Dave, when I take time off a cycle and I mm -hmm. go back on, I and mean, first week I explode. Yeah. And two weeks in, I'm not seeing anything. Three weeks in, I'm not like right. seeing anything. I'm like, Some okay, something's wrong here. Um, so I go and contact Jason Huck, knowing that years ago he had mercury poisoning. Right. He told me everything to do. He said, get in touch with a functional uh, medicine doctor, get the provoke chelation test. Yeah which is where they give you the chelator, you know, either orally or IV, mine was oral, mm. and then you measure your urine for a six, six, uh, pee in a cup for six hours, send it out to the lab, comes back, it was off the fucking charts. Wow, okay. Um, so yeah, so I started the chelation therapy in June. So what do they do for chelator? Like what, do you, what, what kind of therapy? You go in and they stick an IV in your arm? How do they do this? So there's numerous um, chelation, ther uh, mm. chelation therapies. It could be IV, oral, there's four of them that they use, BAL, uh, DMPS, DMSA, and I forgot the fourth one, but DMPS and DMSA is the main chelators. Okay. Um, for June, they just used DMSA because they wanted to see my sensitivity and how tolerant I am to because sometimes people will draw, when you take chelators, it draws it out of your organs and tissue because that's where heavy metals sit. Right. And when it comes out, you do get very toxic. So they mm -hmm. wanted to see how I was. So, um, but in July, we started with the IV and DMSA. So twice a month, I get DMPS I, uh, intravenously. Mm -hmm. um, and that strictly focuses on mercury. And then the other two weeks, I use DMSA twice a week. And that does chelate mercury, but it also chelates lead, arsenic. Okay. Um, and they think cadmium, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Cadmium. Main, cadmium yeah. Yes, cadmium. Um, so these basically draw out and it goes through basically the kidneys. Gotcha. Now, uh, during this time, you have to drink extra fluids. What, what, what do they recommend that you do, you know, during this time? So, I got to be honest, Dave, I'm not really too happy. I actually left the first doctor I was with. Okay. He wasn't being too um, informative. Honestly, most of the information I got was from Jason Hull. Yeah, Jason's, he, like, Jason's like a genius on this because he really had a very bad case of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was, I mean, me and him were comparing notes and every symptom I had, he, he had. had. Yeah. And I was able to basically piece stuff together. So, I mean, water, I go for IVs twice a week for minerals um, because chelate, chelators do pull out the good minerals as well. Sure. I can find yeah. infusions, um, water. I stopped training in June and July just so it's less taxing on my body and my kidneys because this process can be a bit you know, taxing on the kidneys. And then, right. of course, I put a whole together a whole supplement regimen of antioxidants right. and all the minerals I need just to cover myself because... Um, you know, the chelators, as they explained, it is almost like chemotherapy, mm. obviously not as bad, but for metals, it pulls everything good and bad out. Right, right. 
Um, so you, so can become, this, you can become mineral deficient is what could happen. And that's right? the problem that happens with a lot of people. And that's why they get very sick when they're going through the chelators because it's also pulling out right, the good. Right, right, right. Now, you never had like uh, those old uh, mercury fillings in your mouth, did you? No, never. Oh, never. So, it was oh, just, so, uh, so it definitely had to be directly from the fish you were eating. I've been a big fish eater my whole life. Even mm. back home, I was a sushi eater. Yeah. All my preps for fish. Um, but of course, when I moved to Vegas, you have all the great sushi places. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, uh, I moved here. And I'm going to different a different sushi place every night for a while. You go to this Flamingo. To you go to the one on Flamingo. What's it called? Um, Yama. Is it Kaze- Kaizen? Y- Yama. Oh, y- Yama. Yes, we go there all the. That's my favorite place there. there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, Yama's you just got to you got to eat the yellowtail and salmon. You just can't have tuna anymore. Yeah, Yama's one of the best ones. And then I was like, oh, great. You know, fish is easy. And then I started doing the damn tuna, flavored tuna packets. I'm putting 10, 12 ounces in the meal. Mix it <laughs> I, I don't think those are that bad. I think it's the, I think it's the big, the big tunas that are the bad ones. Like the, yeah, the, the, and the, and the big eye. Yeah. I don't trust any tuna now, Dave. I'm so no, fucking scarred from this. Isn't it get- terrible that all the, you finally find something healthy that you like to eat. And it, it turns out it's worse than the eating red meat, you know? And it was, I mean, Dave, the, the symptoms were horrible. So it started with stomach issues. And then next thing you know, I have a hurt. I have an injured shoulder now, um, which I'm trying to get fixed. Then came the mood issues. I had severe depression, yeah. um, focus issues. My memory was was just, my memory is still not back, but my short-term memory is horrible. Um, and then, like, I hate, you know, I'm going to be honest with people. Yeah. Um, I was actually getting suicidal thoughts. Oh, really? And, that I, didn't, bad and I didn't realize that, you know, obviously I didn't realize what was going on. I'm starting to think like, am I really like depressive? What the fuck is going on here? Yeah. And they call it suicidal uh, ideologies right. um, with mercury and heavy metals because it's just, it, it totally completely messes with your brain. Now, when you went for, you went for this challenge test, I just want to tell people what the difference is. The challenge test is they give you a chelating agent and then they measure your, 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 to see how much it pulls out of the stored that was stored in the organs. Now, did you also go for regular blood work to see what your heavy metals were in your blood just normally? Were they normal? No, so so they did uh, that test. So the thing with the blood test, Dave, it shows recent exposure. Um, recent exposure, and of course, when you take the chelators, the blood test will be high because now it's being pulled from the organs and muscles and into your blood. So the urine tests with the chelators are going to be important. So, for instance, I so go do you tomorrow. think that more people should do that? Like, I'm wondering, maybe I should have done a challenge test. Maybe that. Maybe I didn't really sense what my real heavy metal status was. Because- so what I tell people is, if it's the slightest elevated, and actually what I've taught, if it's the slightest elevated on the blood test, yeah, go get a challenge test done. Right. And that because will test for all heavy metals, or just for for one or one. It or- it tests for them all. Oh. Yeah, it tests for them all because even me, my lead was even high. Oh, it was too. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it was one uh, 1.0 was the uh, the toxicity level. Mine came back 1.1. And where, I always wonder where the fuck is lead coming? You know what? But they say that all the vegetables, anything grown in the ground now has lead in it. Did you know that? It's, vegetables. It, yeah. Yes, it could come from uh, vegetables, foods. Um, I mean, it comes from old paint, lead pipes in homes. Uh, it's just, it's environmental exposure more than anything. I mean, if you look at study, if you go online and dig, you'll look that after 1993, um, you know, autism, um, uh, mental, you know, mental, um, mental health issues, and even lead causes, uh, heart, heart issues, kidney issues. It's one of the main causes of health issues and birth defects in this country. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Now, now I'm nervous. Now I'm, now I'm going to go get a challenge because I'm an erotic. Because I'm thinking, because I thought I had heavy metal exposure because, you know, my short term memory is going. Then I said, well, you know what? I'm 53 years old. Maybe I'm just, you know, I just, but I have trouble memorizing, remembering things short term. I don't know if it's because I'm so busy and I have three kids and I'm running around, but, you know, it's a very real possibility. I mean, we all ate a ton of freaking fish, you know, back yeah. in the day. And I don't know. I could still have stored mercury in my body. I don't know. You know, that, and this and is something that's very real to bodybuilders because we eat, no one eats six times a day like we do or more or more. So it's very realistic that you could speed up the process that might take some people 20 years to accumulate. We're doing it in six weeks, you know, we're eating that much food. And the problem is a lot of people don't realize that. I mean, it's again, you'll see it in medical journals that a lot of psychiatric disorders, anxiety, ADHD, yeah. Depression, a misdiagnosed. Meanwhile, it's caused from friggin' mercury. I wonder if some of the, uh, and I don't want to mention names. I wonder if some of the the recent suicides in our industry that we saw could have been linked to maybe heavy metal toxicity. Even uh, you know, 
you, you, that thing is, you don't know unless you get tested. And regular doctors don't put this on their panels. I wish they right. freaking did, but for some reason, our medical, our regular medical system doesn't really recognize heavy metals. I don't know why, because it's so prevalent, especially with the kids eating. Remember the kids? They used to always talk about kids eating paint chips and stuff like that. Yeah, paint chips, yeah. and even um, even like some of the pajamas that are made in China right. have lead in in the print on it, and you know, babies they chew they and chew, on they chew stuff. On. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I well, I, this is another good health message to you guys out there if you're not feeling right and you can't figure out what it is you might want to go get a heavy metal challenge test and you're saying you have to go to a functional doctor is that what it's called yeah functional uh, functional medicine doctor okay um i have not found one regular you know md mm -hmm. that actually handles these things um so it's only functional medicine doctors so if you go online you google chelation functional doctor mm -hmm. um you'll see them in your area i mean they have actually florida has a tremendous amount of them yeah um here they're very limited in vegas Jason's um, yeah, got one in, in Tampa. He told me about that. I, I never went and got that because I don't have any time. But, you know, uh, sometimes I think I'm being a hypochondriac. You know, I don't want to be hyper. But at the same time, I'd rather check it out and know that I'm, I'm clean, you know, rather than wonder about it, you know. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, even my doctor was explaining to me, um, you know, again, lead, lead alone, it, it's one of the ma leading causes of death in the United States. Like, people will say heart disease, this, this, and that. But lead actually raises the chances of that like dramatically. Right, right. Then, then what happens is you start getting paranoid because you say, okay, I got this this one issue. Maybe it's being caused by heavy metals. Maybe it's not just that you know I have shit luck, you know, or something like that. Or so I always say, rule out everything else, and then you don't have to worry about it. And so um, I'm glad. Look, I'm glad you're on the mend. And uh, do, uh, is there any chance that we see you on stage next year? So that is why I moved to Vegas, and I feel like. And I understand. I feel like a lot of people think I've been bullshitting over the last few years about me coming back. And it's right. understandable. You know, I went through a lot for a couple of years. I did disappear. Um, but I moved to Vegas last March to get back into the competitive scene, to surround myself with like-minded people, to get the fuck out of New York, to get in more of a positive environment. Um, this year was supposed to be my comeback. Yeah. And um, with everything that's been going on, it's been impossible to not only – I mean, the past three weeks I've been doing tr dramatically better. Uh, my pumps are coming back in the gym. I'm feeling good again. Uh, moods are back. But before that, up until last June, May, I mean, I could, I was shrinking when I trained. So this year was supposed to be the comeback. Obviously, it's not happening. Next year is the goal. Um, my doctor figures over the next four to eight weeks, um, I should be 100%. And once I get that green light, I know that my body internally will be able to function. Yeah. Um, all, get, you know, all uh, lights are go. And next year, I'm planning on getting back. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad. Look, I'm glad. You know, a lot of people don't realize because they think that you're older than you are because you've been around our industry so long. I mean, we shot that first video with you at 16 years old. You're only 28 years old, which is probably still one of the youngest guys on our pro circuit. So you got all your best years still ahead of you. I'm glad that you kind of squared away all this stuff. And how do you like training at Flex's gym? Is it is it as good you know, as people I, say? You know, I have to really give it to him. You know, him, his wife, Allie, they put together such a freaking cool environment. Um, that truly is going to be the new West Coast Mecca. Yeah. I mean, you walk in there just on a regular day like yesterday. I mean, you had Flex, you had Hassan Mustafa, you had uh, Cho, Cho uh, from Korea, you had uh, Missy Truscott. You have people visiting all the time, people training right. there. The machinery, Arsenal strength stuff, prime stuff is amazing. But the environment and the setup of the gym is truly something special. I mean, you could be an amateur. You could not even be into on the stage yeah. and go in there and you'll feel welcome because everybody is just truly friendly. Everybody's there training hard and it's going to be a very special place for sure. I, I love it there. Does Flex hang out there every day? Is he in the gym? He's there every day, every That's day. So it's, so it's cool because, you know, he has, you know, he comes and he trains himself, but he's there most of the time. So people come in, I mean, they're right. grabbing for pictures and stuff like that. And, you know, he welcomes it, you know, he loves all that. Well, I mean, that's, if, if you have a business, and that's why people always ask me, Dave, why didn't, why didn't you ever open a gym? I'm like, because if I'm not going to be there every day, and I and I always use my my uh, idol for running the gym, running a gym properly, Steve Weinberger. The guy's always there. He could come back from a trip. He's been all weekend. He goes right to the gym to check True. things. Because it, that's your labor. you got to be there. If you're not there, this gym will not be successful. You can't just open a gym and let it run itself. That that's That's a recipe for going out of business. So I'm happy to hear Flex is there. And I know he's got, is Justin still there? Justin's still yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Justin, Justin's a manager yeah. at the gym. Yeah, Justin's there. awesome there. I mean, they got a good staff there. I, I, I think the gym is going to be a very successful operation. 
Yeah, and like I said, anybody that's watching this, if you make a trip to Vegas, definitely make the time to head over there. It's 100% worth it. And anybody that's a fan of bodybuilding or fan of training, you know, you'd yeah. love it. Now, on the other hand, you also got Iris and Hide's gym, the powerhouse yes. there. Have you gone and seen that one yet? Yeah, so that one, I mean, I would go there more frequently if it was closer, just because Hide, you know, I've known Hide since I was 18. Yeah. Great guy. Um, I did visit it. When it first opened, it's a great gym as well. Uh, the machines in there is great. It's about like 35, 40 minutes from me. It's more near uh, Sahara. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So it's closer yes. to the Strip? Yes. Yeah. It's not too far from the Strip. But again, uh, I only trained there once so far. But it, it seemed like a great gym. I like the idea as a bodybuilder. If I was competitive and competing right now, I like the idea of having two gyms that are like that upper echelon that were put together by bodybuilders being in the same area. Because you know, what you know what happens. You have one place you like to train certain body parts. Then you maybe want to get out of that atmosphere and kind of reinvigorate yourself. You go to the other gym to train, you know, whatever, legs or whatever. I don't know what it is. And you have like that diversity. And because there's two gyms there and they're competing against each other, even though everyone's all friends, you know, let's face it, it one raises the other one's game. This one gets this and this gym's got to get that. And it, it makes it so that the gyms never kind of become complacent and start going downhill, so to speak. Yeah, no, that's 100%. And that's what a lot of people here do, do they? You know, they bounce back. Like, yeah. I have a friend, he likes to do legs there. And then he'll do his other body parts right. at Arsenal, or vice versa, you know? So you, you get the best of both worlds. And, sure. you know, they both truly are great gyms. Yeah, well, I'm glad that you're doing well. Obviously, I've known you since you were a kid. And, you know, you've, uh, you're, I know you have a terrific coaching business. And I know that's still going very strong. You have a lot of athletes, you know, turning pro and doing well. So I want to wish you, you know, continued success with that and, uh, you know, keep us updated because I'm always, I like to, you know, get this information out there because like you said, there's a lot of people out there that don't even know they have heavy metal toxicity and this is something that they can be easily diagnosed with and at least you can be told, hey, no, you don't have it or yes, you do. And if you do have it, there is something you can do about it. I agree 100%. So yes, thank you for having me on because over the next few months, um, I'm going to get my YouTube channel started. Um, so I, I'm going to bring a big, uh, a bit more of a uh, light on this subject because what I've went through, you know, I've actually seen stories, especially this one young man, um, young man, as if I'm old, geez. Uh, <laughs> you're, he, you're wise beyond your years, I always tell people. I said, Dominic's an old soul. I said, because he, you, you think you're talking to a 50-year-old guy and the guy's only in his 20s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dave. But yeah, like this one kid, you know, real quick, he, uh, he had no idea what he was going through. Nobody was able to help him. And he documented his whole experience with this. And he actually wound up committing suicide. Oh, and terrible. Yeah, he left his journal to his parents. He said, oh. uh, you know, please get this out there. I really need more awareness on this subject because wow. you know, nobody's going to help me. Maybe I'll be able to help somebody one day. So, oh, yeah, um, yeah, you know, yeah. like I said, it's been, it was, it was brutal, Dave. And yeah. you know, I'm a very mind over matter person. And yeah. it was at times very tough. So, you know, if I could help somebody in some way with this, you know, awesome. All right. Well, thank you for joining us and being so honest and uh, upright and upright. Uh, have fun at Tell Flex. I send my regards and uh, we'll keep updated with uh, Dominic as uh, things happen. And uh, when you figure out which show you're going to do for next year, you'll let us know. I have a feeling we're going to see you at the New York Pro. Uh, you never know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you, you guys will be the first ones to know. All so right. you've been support me since I was 16. Thank babe. you, Dom. I appreciate that. All right, guys, that's going to take us to the end of another episode of Live With. Uh, I'm Dave Palumbo with Dominic Cardone. We'll see you next time.